We've already talked about my initial thoughts on the Dominator and what happened when I put some cages I had laying around inside of it, but what happens when you get the most tricked out kit you can from an online retailer? Well, NF Strike sent me this kit to see just that. Now I let them know that I already had a Dominator, but they wanted to send me all of the kit that they sell to see my thoughts on it and do a compare and contrast to just the shell and the first stage that I received from Worker itself. So uh, that was kind of crazy and uh, let's start talking about it. Well, this one is, it's, I love the shell. You know that if you watched the last video, I love this shell. And when you just kind of put some like tactical stuff on it, it certainly doesn't hurt the shell. I'm not the biggest fan of tactical and all that kind of stuff, but if I'm being honest, I don't really mind it on this blaster. It kind of lends itself to it. The sci-fi look uh, isn't really harmed too much. I don't think I'll be running these sites or uh, I definitely won't be running this at games, but the grip actually, I may consider running. It's actually a nice feeling grip just to give you something up front so if you don't like holding a magwell and as the weight is very much in the front of this blaster having something up here that you can help grip with and hold on to that weight is definitely definitely a plus so this may may where it will be staying on my uh on my dominator so that's a surprising plus for me as i really hadn't been a fan of of grips and stuff like that on my flywheel blasters until now so that's a surprising plus the stock is their extendable kind of uh bare bones style stock that feels hefty as all get out but uh, you'll notice a little bit of a gap there because i did not go through the standard wiring area here for the battery because three stages small battery tray Mm, didn't really want to mess with that. So I just went ahead and uh, sent my leads out the back for a battery stock. But since they did send me this, I wanted to have it on here for aesthetics to show you what it looks like, which is not bad. It doesn't look bad, that's for sure. Uh, and it does feel sturdy. I had concerns about this one, um, like namely if you fell and impacted and it just shot up into your shoulder that that would not be pleasant and I still do have some concerns about that but uh, I mean if you're falling on your blaster already things are probably not going to go too well so uh, eh, I like to avoid injury when possible so I just think about those things um, the flip up sights are definitely cool except that if you have one of the different reticles up here on this one uh, it won't go down all the way. So that way it works and you flip the switch and it pops up. But if you have that one, it has to like angle weird and it pushes itself up. And uh, that's kind of a bummer. But I mean, I do like they come down. That is definitely cool. It adds a nice little look to it. Uh, the faux suppressor on the front is definitely cool looking. And the fact that it's the one that comes off and you've got your muzzle here and they can screw it right back on. I dig that again, not something I'm really gonna use at games, especially because it looks a bit realistic. Uh, so that's something that's going to stay for like photos and paint job, like wall hanger type stuff. Or if I'm gonna go to a LARP uh, or some other game like that, this will definitely, definitely get used because it looks fantastic. There's no arguing that. Um, so it really kind of completes the aesthetic and the look for a complete blaster uh, kit that you can buy all in one. Now, let's talk about the inside. What's going on in here? NF Strike sent me everything. Uh, plain and simple, everything. They sent me the shell, uh, all the stuff on the outside, the three flywheel cages, the 43.5 canted worker Gen 3 flywheel cages that have the wider opening for the darts to work with the double stack mag, which, oh, I have the inserts in, duh. Why that is not fitting, but uh, I have the inserts in so that I could use the 22 mags, but they do come out relatively easily. There's one. And there's, if it doesn't get hung up on, oh, the mag release, that. 
there's the other one. And then we can put the 40, 40 dart mag in, which uh, did feed fine, uh, except for a couple issues that were not actually the mag's fault. So let's talk about the infernals, internals first, then I'll talk about the issues I encountered uh, as we go through. Now, they do give you all the switches, all the wiring, all of that stuff that you need, which is nice. I, I do like that, but the components aren't the highest quality. The switch that it comes with for your main switch down here by the rev trigger is a 15 inch amp switch instead of a 21 amp switch, which uh, 21 amp switch still is not ideal for three flywheel cages and a pusher, uh, but it's better than 15. And then I believe the little green switches like the DC cherry style, uh, DC, yeah, style switches are five amps instead of 10, which is definitely a bummer as well. Uh, the boards here for the little power and speed functions, they do, I believe, have MOSFETs on them. Bubalolo took a look through and found that they do have them built in, which is definitely a plus, but it's not going to save you from everything. So you may want to install your own extra one, depending if you want something extra beefy, things like that. You'll notice I don't have the actual knobs on here uh, to look nice and finished. And that's because I made a mistake on the wiring. I didn't give myself enough slack in some of the wires. So uh, if I forced them into perfect position, the solder joins were really stressed and, and it was not worth it. So it functions. It just doesn't look as pretty as it could. So bear that in mind when you are wiring these up, give yourself enough slack, enough uh, extra wire to work with to put things where they need to be. Uh, now it gives you the same yellow gearbox motor setup for the auto pusher. Uh, the, some of the parts I believe are now cast instead of 3D printed, which is nice, except that the pusher arm itself uh, was actually a little warped. It was a little like bent downward, which was a major, major bummer for me. Uh, I had spent time kind of reforming it and everything. And when I first installed it and was testing it out, uh, I noticed an issue with the 40 dart mags. Uh, it was like the return spring for the pusher was not strong enough and it was getting stuck on the darts uh, before it could retract fully, which was causing it to not feed properly. Once I lubed it up and sanded some stuff down, no problems, it wasn't an issue. So remember, always lube things up, uh, make sure the, the interaction is smooth and not sticking. That'll save you some hassle in the future. Um, wiring the guide they send you, well, it does walk you through each step and, and gives you somewhat written instructions and pictures. Uh, I really wish the diagram was bigger. The diagram is very, very small. So you have to kind of squint at it constantly and look and you're like tracing the lines and like, okay, this there, I think that's there. Maybe that, no, yeah. The, Okay, yeah, no, that's there. It's like, instead of it being quick and intuitive, you had to constantly re-reference and double check and make sure that you were looking at it properly, which is a bummer. It's not a, a deal breaker, but it's just something to mention that I wish Worker would do a little bit better. Uh, I like that it's a written or printed instruction sheet now, which has both the Dominator and the Swordfish instructions on it, which is nice as opposed to having to look something up online uh, but they can improve on it, and I hope they do. Now, let's talk about flywheel setups. This is an all-metal setup. It's their, their canted cages with the metal blue wheels with their um, kind of older 132 size worker motors, which are not great. If we're being honest, they're not that great of motors. They have the PCBs on them. And I I want to stress this again. I followed everything except for the battery lead placement. I followed everything according to the instructions and the supplies given to me. I didn't use any of my own supplies because I wanted this to be what you would experience if you bought a full kit from an online reseller like NF Strike, who sent me this one. I'm going to keep reiterating that. Um, but 
Well, let's 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 uh, let's talk about the testing because that's that's where things are going to show their issues. Let's go ahead and pop some footage over me talking of me firing the blaster, and we'll talk about the performance. And it is well, the FPS is there, the velocity is there, but the stability is not. You notice accu fakes are completely whirly birding. Like seemed like almost every other dart when I was shooting it was just a whirly bird, or the head was detached. And this is not a high crush setup. This is a low crush setup, but it's the metal wheels and it's the canting, and it's just it's causing all kinds of stress on the darts, which is not ideal. Uh, now they actually recommend using FVJs with this setup. With this this uh, canted low crush setup. And they actually sent me some FJs. I don't own them normally. So I thought, you know what? They sent them. It's what they recommend. I will try it with them. Well, it caused some issues. That's, that's pretty much the, the only way to put it. Um, at some point during the testing, I burnt out a flywheel, a uh, flywheel motor. And uh, it was not spinning. I don't know how long, but it wasn't spinning. And I noticed this after I finished FPS testing. When I finished the FPS testing, I went to rev the blaster again, and it just didn't rev. It was done. Uh, I had burnt not only one motor, but I also burnt the switch, the rev switch here. So I had to rep I, it just stopped working. And that was a major bummer. I popped a different switch in, uh, the actual switch I had from the other Dominator, just to make sure that it was in fact the case, and it was. Uh, the motor, it's this top one closest to the magwell. That one's definitely donezo. And I don't have any extra motors, which I, I wanted to test this as sent, as I keep emphasizing. So I can't really replace it, I don't have any extras on it. But I did get an idea. Uh, I wasn't able to do an FPS test for AccuFakes because I started with the FVJs for the FPS testing and then the blaster died. Um, and it was sitting around 200 FPS, which for a low crush, canted, three-stage setup seems reasonable to me. I was very surprised, honestly. Uh, so you, I would expect similar or better out of uh, AccuFakes. This is not the setup I would recommend. Um, I don't like metal wheels. I don't like canted cages, overly canted cages. I still think there's some room for ex exploration in the canted setup, but I would like to see less harsh because I don't want to see as many whirly birds. Um, but something interesting is I was talking with NF Strike when they linked this particular listing to me, and I said I would really like it if you offered some of the 42.5 uh, crush cages from Worker in the non canted version. I think those would be really good second and third stages for these setups. And so they said they'd look into it, and they actually sent me three sets of the 42.5 uh, millimeter crush cages from Worker with some of their high crush wheels, which I also recommended. And I want to test those. I just don't have motors to test them currently. But the big important thing is I did not think that these cages from what I'd seen in the past had the wide enough aperture for the darts to enter from the double stacked mag because it's so wide. I didn't think they had a gen three of them. When these came in, I was pleasantly surprised. I popped them open and there were Gen 3 versions of the 42.5 cage, which was awesome because that means I could pop one of those as my first stage into a Dominator and then pop whatever else I want in there as well, which was awesome. It was just so cool to me that Worker had thought about that and already updated them. So that's a big ups to that. And I, I sincerely hope that NF Strike will put some pre-made kits, uh, on their website utilizing the 42.5 millimeter cages because I think they will be much, much better than the canted setups that they currently are offering. So all in all, I feel like I, while I love the Dominator, I love this blaster, I love this shell, I like the way it feels, um, I can't recommend buying one of the fully decked out kits currently. Um, I can recommend buying the shell, buying uh, a grip, some stuff like that. 
The auto kit, the full auto kit, I'm not sold on specifically because unlike some of the older versions of the full auto kits or the select fire kits, let's switch this over. While you have your flywheel speed and your uh, pusher speed, the flywheel speed will change the speed of the flywheels, obvious. The pusher speed changes the speed of the motor as opposed to the, the rate of fire. So it's manipulating the rate of fire through slowing the motor down, meaning the arm gets pushed slower and slower when you lower this. So you sacrifice response time for rate of fire, which means I'm always gonna have it turned up all the way, so why even have it? I don't wanna have to wait a second for the pusher to slowly creep forward and then creep back which is the case if you turn it almost all the way down, which is very, very frustrating, and I'm not a fan of that. So I personally would not utilize the controllers here. If you want full auto, just go with the pusher and just straight through. They have the, the wiring guide for that in the instructions as well, which is nice. I'll probably be switching that out for this. But I had to test it, had to get the thoughts out there to all of you. Um, so it's something you should consider and keep in mind when picking these things up. So definitely recommend the blaster. Uh, I have not had, I think I had one jam with the 40 dart mags and I've got two of them now. So I've tested two separate ones, but I had one jam with the 40 dart mag and that was, I'm pretty certain from the flywheel motor being burnt out and the, uh, the head getting stuck in there from an FVJ uh, or even Accu... It was an AccuFake that got stuck in and kind of chewed up. And uh, yeah, that caused it to jam up. And I pulled the mag out and looked. I was like, oh, the mag's fine. I popped it back in, tried to fire again. Didn't realize the dart was still stuck in the blaster. So that one's on me. But uh, that's actually, real quick, talk about dartware. It, it just... It, the metal flywheels with the setup and the FEJ, it destroyed them. So I, I don't, I do not recommend them. Um, stick with the better darts, 100%. And I sincerely, like I said, I really, really hope NF Strike will put some kits that are like the shell um, and some 42.5 cages with maybe the some better motors or no motors at all. God, I would really love if NF Strike would sell motors from like Foam Blast and MTB. Uh, so that the better motors could get more recognition and get sold all over the world. I don't know, just, I'm rambling here, but uh, that's kind of my thoughts on this setup as it is, the setups you can order um, and what you can expect. I, I think there's some good in some of the setups since they can offer varying amounts, but for everything I've encountered so far, there are some issues with the quality of components that are sent in these. So if you have your own wiring and your own switches and all of that stuff, then you're probably gonna do a little bit better and you wanna replace the motors. So just keep that stuff in mind when you're looking at these. They're not bad bases to start with. Uh, you just have to know what you're getting into before you do so. So that said, I think I have gone on through just about everything I wanted to talk about this. This is actually the, not the last time we're gonna talk about the Dominator because I'm looking forward to fully decking out the other Dominator and getting it a paint job and I've already got the parts in to fully deck it out the way I want to. So I'm excited about that. That'll be a video in the future, but uh, I wanna know your thoughts on kits, blaster kits and stuff like that from places like NF Strike, uh, which again, one more time, I will thank for sending this my way uh, to let me share my thoughts, good and bad, which there were plenty of bad in this one, but I still love this blaster. I love the Dominator shell. It's so, it just makes me happy. I'm excited about it. Um, but I wanted to be able to warn you about potential pitfalls, and I'm glad that they let me do that. So thank you to them. Thank you to all of you. If you are new to this channel, you enjoyed this video, and you want to see more in the future, feel free to hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you to be a part of this community. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.